And so we begin today in London, where UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson says he now recognises that his stewardship of the country's Conservative Party, and thus the UK government, is coming to an end. But in a statement that was entirely devoid of contrition, despite even more resignations from his government only today, he insisted he will stay on as a caretaker Prime Minister until the Conservative Party elects a new leader. Good afternoon. It, thank you, thank you. It is clearly now the will of the Parliamentary Conservative Party that there should be a new leader of that party and therefore a new Prime Minister. And I've agreed with Sir Graham Brady, the chairman of our backbench MPs, that the process of choosing that new leader should begin now. And the timetable will be announced next week. And I've today appointed a cabinet to serve as I will until a new leader is in place. I want to thank you, the British public, for the immense privilege that you have given me. And I want you to know that from now on until the new Prime Minister is in place, your interests will be served and the government of the country will be carried on. Johnson explained his decision to put the nation through an agonising 48 hours by referencing the mandate he claims he was personally given by Britain's voters in the country's 2019 election. But of course his name was only on the ballot in his own local constituency. He only serves as Prime Minister because he is the leader of his party. His statement today came after more than 50 members of his own government and many of his top aides resigned in just the last two days, sparked by his handling of misconduct allegations levelled against a senior member of the government. Foreign Secretary Liz Truss beat a hasty retreat from the G20 ministerial meeting that's taking place in Indonesia, saying that Johnson had made the right decision. There's speculation that she is heading back to London to launch her own leadership bid. The 58-year-old Prime Minister has been in power for almost three years, despite a series of non-stop swirling scandals. He was accused of being too close to party donors, of protecting supporters from bullying and corruption allegations, of constantly placing self-interest above the national interest and of being dishonest with the public about parties that took place in Downing Street and other government offices that broke COVID-19 lockdown regulations. The straw that broke the camel's back Johnson's recent concession that he knew about sexual misconduct allegations against fellow Conservative lawmaker Chris Pincher and yet promoted him anyway to a senior position. We're joined now live from West. of the atmosphere there. I mean, it has clearly been a very dramatic couple of hours in British politics. And I think it's fair to say the uncertainty is not entirely over yet. That's absolutely right, Simon. It is a very, very busy day here. We've got the usual mix of tourists, but of course, we've got all the journalists from really around the world standing outside number 10 Downing Street as we've been waiting throughout the morning for the for the speech from the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson. And as you say, he has agreed to step down as leader of the Conservative Party, but he has said that he will not stand down as Prime Minister for another few months. Now, this is certainly not the end of the roller coaster because many people think that actually that's just not acceptable. They think he needs to go now, he needs to leave number 10 and give way to a new leadership who can build, begin to rebuild trust in the Conservative Party. So we're seeing a very mixed picture on the ground. We're seeing, for example, the leader of the opposition Labour Party, Keir Starmer, actually threaten to call a vote of confidence in the Prime Minister if he doesn't step down as Prime Minister sooner than he said and other MPs but from all parties but even the Conservative Party have said similar.
And Sally, let's just be clear. I mean, Boris Johnson staying on as a caretaker prime minister would require him to be able to appoint people to uh, many, if not all, of those 50 positions that are currently vacant. How on earth is he going to be able to do that? How on earth, even as a caretaker, is he going to be able effectively to govern? That's absolutely right. There's a lot of speculation that he won't be able to fill all of those positions. We've seen throughout the morning local time, there's been announcements of new ministerial positions being filled one after another. But there are so many more left to do as well as ministerial aides. And so it's really unclear if he is going to have the support to keep on going. Now, we've also seen some members of the cabinet who hadn't resigned, the small number, have said that they will continue on in those positions to support the running of the government as the uh, leadership election takes place. So those include, for example, Home Secretary Priti Patel. But, as you mentioned earlier, Liz Truss, the Foreign Secretary, could well be on her way back to start her own leadership bid. So there's no doubt that some people who are either in the government as we speak or maybe soon asked to be in the government actually would rather use that time to start working on their own campaigns for an election that's likely to take place as soon as this summer. So it really is going to be still very much up in the air as to whether he is able to continue as Prime Minister, getting things through government, getting through things through Parliament, keeping the country running when he has lost so much support. And, and Sally, talk a little bit about pressure that's coming from uh, senior figures within the Conservative Party. We've seen within the last few minutes, just as we were coming on air, a letter that former Prime Minister Sir John Major has written to Sir Graham Brady, who of course heads the influential 1922 Committee of Backbenchers that will now decide when a leadership election is going to take place. He says that Boris Johnson's proposal that he should remain uh, as a caretaker Prime Minister may be unsustainable. He says for the overall well-being of the country, Mr Johnson should not remain in Downing Street any longer than necessary to effect the smooth transition of government. I mean, that's an indication that Sir John Major and presumably many others in Westminster just have a feeling that Boris Johnson is playing for time and is still hoping, even at this last moment, uh, that something might come along to revive his fortunes. That's absolutely right. There are still significant numbers of leading figures, as you say, coming out, saying he really needs to go now. This is not just the opposition Labour Party or the Scottish National Party saying it's time for him to go, give room to someone else. Actually, people in his own inner circle and people who really have authority within the Conservative Party are calling on him to go. Another example is Lord Hasseltine, who said he really, you know, now is the time. Another is his former right-hand man, Dominic Cummings, who says, and I quote, he's playing for time and will try to stay and he said if he does stay that will cause carnage so this is very much mounting pressure from across the board the other thing we haven't really mentioned is that the public are also very keen for him to be gone in a poll that was uh, put out over the last couple of days we saw that 69 percent of the public white more widely uh, think that he needs to go and within the conservative party that's the majority of members as well according to this poll so it's as i say it really is pressure from across the board from his own cabinet well now his former cabinet his own mps former mps and uh, lords and also the the uh, public themselves so it really is a matter of time of you know if he will be able to hang on or if he will feel the need to leave before october and just give way to some fresh some fresh leadership who can start to restore trust in what people see as a really damaged conservative party Sally Patterson, live for We On at Westminster on a very dramatic and historic day uh, in British politics. Thank you very much indeed for that update.
Now, while making his resignation speech, Boris Johnson said it's up to his party to decide who will be the next Conservative chief. Uh, and there are several candidates already jockeying to succeed him. As we've said, Foreign Secretary Liz Truss is one of them. She's popular with some sections of the party. Also in the running, Jeremy Hunt, a former British Foreign Secretary, who made it clear that he would be likely to run for leader again after he finished second to Boris Johnson in the party's leadership contest back in 2019. Ben Wallace is the current defence secretary. He has become the most popular member of government with Conservative Party members, in part thanks to his handling of the crisis in Ukraine. Nadim Zahawi, who's just been made Chancellor of the Exchequer, is also considered to be a potential front runner. And there are many other names being thrown into the ring. For more, we're joined now from London by Alexander Claxon. He's a political analyst and the founder of the Global Political Insight Think Tank. Uh, Alexander, thanks very much indeed for being with us today. Let me just start by asking you uh, your thoughts on just how long Boris Johnson can stay on. Is the Conservative Party not now likely to accelerate the race to succeed him? Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. And in answer to your question, I think so. Um, there has just been too much uh, controversy surrounding Boris Johnson, and uh, his uh, uh, his position has become essentially so toxic to the Conservative Party that the party essentially needs to think about uh, its standing among the general public as well as any future general election. Now, of, of course, it should be noted that a general election is not coming up for the foreseeable uh, future. Uh, the current parliament has um, at least another three years um, of mandate uh, as the last election was only held uh, in 2019, so only just uh, just over three years ago. Um, but nevertheless, uh, many, many of the members of the Conservative Party understand that Boris Johnson is now viewed very unfavorably uh, among the general public uh, in the UK. And the longer he stays on as the uh, prime minister uh, of the country, the more damage essentially he can do to the Conservative Party going forward, which in turn will, of course, damage the party's uh, chances of, of winning uh, in future general elections, as well as any by-elections that may take place uh, in specific constituencies as well. Absolutely. As you scan the runners and riders in the race to succeed Boris Johnson, are we going to see an end to an era of populism in the UK? Are we going to return to some sense of more, a, a greater degree of orthodoxy in the way in which the British government is run, regardless of which candidate wins? Well, if we use the United States as an example, then perhaps the answer is yes. Obviously, in the United States, after Donald Trump, there was a significant push for some kind of normalcy in the country, let's say a more standard uh, leader in the face of Joe Biden. Uh, we could see a similar situation in the UK. I think Boris Johnson um, was, his, his, his mannerisms and his character were popular at some point, but uh, it's worth noting that at the moment the UK is undergoing very severe um, challenges, both economic and, and societal. The, the economy is in, is, in, is in a dire situation. The inflation is, is uh, reaching around 10 percent. Um, the growth in the country is going to be one of the lowest among the G7 countries. Uh, energy prices have risen to the point where many people are struggling to pay for their energy bills. So what many people are looking for is a leader who can essentially get things done. Uh, you know, the public are not interested in, in, in someone who can make jokes, uh, you know, who can make people laugh. Uh, that might have worked uh, at a time when there was no war um, on the European continent. I'm, of course, talking about the, the conflict in Ukraine. Uh, that might have been fine then when things were fine. But at the moment when the country is facing uh, significant challenges, uh, both in the country itself and in the European continent more widely, I think mo many people are looking for a stable leader who can get things done. And I'm not going to hold you to this, Alexander, but if you look at the field of possible candidates that are out there right now, today, who do you think's the winner? You know, it's it's really impossible to say at the moment. There is no uh, clear front runner. Um, a lot will depend. Well, well, what I can say, I think, uh, at this stage is it's likely to be someone who is a Brexiteer. Uh, regardless of what happened with Boris, Boris Johnson, uh, we must... Um, 
remember that the Conservative Party uh, broadly remains in favour of Brexit. So it is likely that the general public, who, uh, sorry, the the, uh, the members of the Conservative Party, because they, they'll be the ones who will be choosing the next leader of the of the party, they will likely choose someone who is uh, who is a Brexiteer. They will likely choose someone who wants to uh, to cut taxes because um, Boris Johnson actually raised taxes uh, recently. That that was quite an unpopular move uh, among the Conservatives. Um, so the, we can expect, um, let's say, certain characteristics uh, of who might be the next uh, leader or, 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 or on what platform uh, he or she will run. But to be honest, it, it's it's absolutely impossible to, to say who will be the next leader of the Conservative Party. Absolutely right. Alexander Claxon, political analyst and founder of the think tank Global Political Insight. Thanks very much indeed for joining us on this extraordinary day in London.